Hello, calculus fans. All right, we're going to calculate a few limits. We're going to start with this picture. And then here are all the limits that we want to calculate. We got a lot of them because many of them are one-sided limits and the corresponding two-sided limits. So it may help you if you took a note of the picture and of all the limits that we would like to calculate. All right, so we're going to be using the picture for each one of these calculations. So first of all, for part A, if we have a limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x plus g of x, we have a limit law that says that we can break that up into two separate limits and, and add them. The first limit is 0, and the second limit is 1. We're just doing this all based off the picture. So that gives us an answer of 1. Now if we go from the right, we can still break it up into two separate limits, but this time we get different values. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x is now 2. We add these up, and we get 3. Now these limits do not agree. These are the one-sided limits. They do not agree. And therefore, the two-sided limit of f of x plus g of x does not exist. Now let's look at why this limit does not exist. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. That's because the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x is equal to 0. And so we can't use the limit law that tells us that we can just break this up into a quotient of limits. In fact, that denominator going to 0 tells us that this limit does not exist. If we go from the right, we can break this up into two separate limits and then divide because this time the limit of the bottom is going to be 2 and that gives us an overall limit of 1 half. Now since the left hand limit of the quotient does not exist then that tells us that the two-sided limit of the quotient also does not exist. Remember that for the two-sided limit to exist both of the one-sided limits must exist and agree. Okay, carrying on, now we're going to do the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, 5 f of x minus g of x. Now limit law 2 says that we can break this up as a difference. Limit law 3 says that we can take that 5 and pull it out in front. Now this turns into 5 times negative 1 minus 4, which is negative 9. Again, this is all just being based off the picture can go take the picture and see what these limits are doing. For part h, we're doing now the limit from the right. We'll break it up just like we did the previous one using limit laws 2 and 3. This time, however, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x is equal to 0. And so now we end up with negative 4. Now, the two-sided limit does not exist because the one-sided limits don't agree. The one-sided limits exist, but they are not the same value. And finally, if we look at the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x times g of x, limit law 4 says we can break it up into a product. And then that's going to be equal to 3 times 2, just going based off the picture, which is 6. Let's take a look at the right-hand limit. Again, we break it up. And this time, the limits are the same. It's still 3 times 2 to get 6. So now, if we look at the two-sided limit, it's equal to 6 because the corresponding one-sided limits exist and are equal to 6. Okay, that's all for now.